Hi guys, I got the question how to know the value of the SMD capacitors on the PCB. Most of the time we have values in the top of the resistors printed but not in the capacitors. So let's learn today how to find the value in the capacitor when the capacitor is on the PCB. As you can watch here, I'm using my microscope and sometimes people ask me, Bob, uh, where is your microscope? Uh, we watch your channel and you have not a microscope. So I will show you first my microscope, guys. This is what my wonderful electronics laboratory looks like. And this, guys, is the poor man's $40 microscope. It's the one I'm using for this video. So don't laugh at me. And now the answer is already done. Let's come back to the video. For this kind of test, what you need is a very fast age rising and falling function generator, 100 Hertz, one volt peak to peak, and oscilloscope. It is good if the oscilloscope has cursors. If not, you have to make it manually. Finding in which point is your 632 uh, millivolts what we are going to do is we are going to calculate the time that it takes for the capacitor to charge to center voltage with a serial resistor and the serial resistor is the serial resistor internal resistor from the function generator. We said in my function generator is 50 ohms. Be aware some function generators have about 600, 680 ohms. Okay. I'm going to continue with this one. Now let's watch the following graphic. No, 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 don't worry, don't worry, don't jump through the window, don't pay attention to the mathematics here. Let me explain you that. We said when we have a serial resistor with a capacitor, the capacitor is going to start charging in a logarithm shape like that. And one resistor, whatever the resistor value is, times the capacitor will give me a constant that we call tau. This constant, it takes five of it. This is the first one, the first tau is right there. The second, the third, the fourth, the five. This horizontal line is time. So it takes five times the capacitor times the resistor for the voltage to charge completely almost to the voltage we apply. Okay, easy. I am not interested about it. What, uh, the only thing I'm interested about is in the first period of time, the first tau, to calculate when the capacitor gets 63.2% of the voltage I'm applying here. In my case, I'm applying 1 volt, so I'm interested in the moment that my capacitor will reach the 632 millivolts. Did you understand? So this short period of time is tau and is equal to the internal resistor of the function generator times the capacitor. That's the box. Now I'm going to explain this and it's very easy guys. Just pay attention. Don't worry, don't complicate with mathematics. I will show you. The voltage in the capacitor for each period of time is equal to the voltage maximum 1 volt peak to peak square wave I'm, I'm applying times 1 minus the logarithm of minus 1 times the tau divided by the resistor times the capacitor. Easy. Don't you believe me? Okay, let's forget about these guys for a moment. Let's repeat this formula again. We said the tau is equal to the resistor times the capacitor, right? And here there was one tau. 
and that tau is divided by the resistor times the capacitor. So one value divided by the same value will be equal to one, right? So all of them, they will cancel each other and it will take the value of one. And all this game is as easy as if you will learn to say one times one equal to one. I told you the formulas were easy. Now, let's come back to the formula. The voltage in the capacitor is equal to the maximum voltage times one minus the logarithmic of minus one times one, right? How much is one times one, one times two, one times three, one times four? Easy. Let's compact the formula now. It's equal to that value. So now it's very simple. The voltage in the capacitor is equal to B max times one minus the logarithms to the power of one, two, three, four, because those the periods here is missing the number fifth. I just eliminate two wing space on the screen so the guys in the smartphone can watch it too. And let's remember B max is equal to one. I told you this is as easy as, as to say one times one, right? So it's one volt. So if we pay attention and we use a scientific calculator, now I have the formula one volt peak to peak times one minus the logarithm of minus one to the minus one power, sorry, is equal to 632 millivolts of this one volt. So that's where I get the values I'm using for. I don't care about the formulas. The only thing you have to learn is we are looking for the 63.2 percent of any voltage we apply because we apply one volt is 632 millivolts. So all this was for you to know where the formula is coming from. But now guys, you know, it's so easy as multiply one times one. And some of you wanted to jump through the window. Hmm. All right. Now that we know that, let's come back to our original graphic. And let's pay attention when in the oscilloscope, the capacitor charging will get the 63, the 63.2% of one volt that is 632 millivolts, right? The first tau that is equal to resistor times the capacitor. We don't know the capacitor, but we will get the tau by the oscilloscope and we know the resistor is from the function generator internal resistance that is 50 ohms. So the capacitor will be whatever value we get from the oscilloscope divided by 50. Easy. That will show the value of the capacitor. Now, let's back to the lab. One of the main problems we get today with the new technology is technology goes lower voltage every time and is more sensitive to the reverse polarity. When we think about to make a measurement of a capacitor, the first thing that crosses our mind is a um, tester like this one or like this other one, and we can use that. But if you watch my videos, I will never apply that kind of testers to this uh, PCB. The reason is because the voltage in the tester is higher probably to the sensitive voltage in the PCB. In this case, this is a PCB that I don't care because I just use it for videos. But when you are repairing, you need to save the life of your components and your PCB. You don't want to trash it by one mistake. So even when in the market, there are some testers to onboard test, you have to be careful if that tester has the voltage necessary for your onboard test or if that tester has higher voltage that can make a damage to it. So that's the reason I rather to use a one volt peak to peak and I am over with the problem of over voltage. But the other problem I will get with a test lead like this or the regular ones to use from the multimeter 
is this kind of thing has polarity. So I can apply the wrong polarity, and when I apply the wrong polarity, I can make a damage in the PCB. So because I don't know which one is the right polarity I'm going to apply to, this is the reason why I have the ground cable like this. And I will take the ground cable and I will look for a ground in the circuit and I will apply the polarization in one specific point. And now if the polarization is right, I will get voltage in the signal. If the polarization is wrong, it will be a short circuit and the current is going through my ground wire and not through the components in the PCB. That's the reason I use that. To me, it's a surprise how many years in YouTube and all the gurus in YouTube, and I'm wondering where the teachers and the universities and uh, technical schools that do not teach and show something like that. So this is the first time you watch it and it's here. And sadly, because everybody should know that. Some of you already know it, but the ones who are starting probably do ignore that. That's the reason maybe we don't watch anybody in YouTube teaching this kind of concept. Now, let's make a test. Let's select first this capacitor. Thirty nine point six microseconds. Thirty nine point six microseconds divided by fifty ohms is equal to seven hundred ninety two nanofarads. Seven hundred is equal to seven hundred ninety two nanofarads. In this case, I will say probably this capacitor could be one microfarad. Let's remember guys, in a printed circuit board, we have components in serial parallel and the tendency is always to be lower. So probably it could be something between the value of 810, 860, but I will take a value about one microfarad and I will keep it as it is. Here the signal is falling to zero and the reason is because I'm applying the wrong polarity. Because I'm using the ground wire, it goes to zero and I didn't apply the inverse polarity to the PCB. Remember guys, that's the reason why Bob Calpon is using this wire for protection. I'm saving the PCB from the wrong polarization. As easy as flipping the test leads and the problem is solved. And nothing happened there. Mm -hmm. A hundred and eighty five microseconds. One hundred and eighty five microseconds. divided by 50 ohms 
is equal to 3.7 microfaradads. Probably this capacitor is 4.7 microfaradads. Let's increase the difficulty. I'm going to make a measurement in parallel capacitors. Let's remember guys, parallel capacitors, we add the values, it's a positive of parallel resistors. A hundred and eighty-eight microseconds. A hundred and eighty-eight microseconds divided by fifty ohms is equal to seventeen point seventy-six microfarads. But there are four capacitors in parallel, so I have to divide this value by four. So I have 4.44 microfarads per capacitor. Probably this is a 4.7 microfarads capacitor, each one of them. And that, guys, is the easy way to find the value in capacitors on board. But remember guys, apply one volt peak to peak, no more than that, and the ground protection in matters. It's very important. And in my case, I do not trust the own circuit unless they are under my specifications. It was easy just to pay attention and the most important to follow the procedures. And remember, don't care too much about the mathematic expressions because we only needed to know that we need one of the five times period that was the resistor times the capacitor. Guys, thanks by watching the video. See you next time for more videos about electronics and do not forget to like if it was worth it to you. The knowledge is now with you and to subscribe to the channel. Thanks by supporting the channel. See you next time.